so hopefully this is going to be a pretty simple tutorial on how to code a layout using like a div overlay as opposed to um, slicing and using tables and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how dry this is going to sound because like I, I've never really done a tutorial on coding before and I know like it's not the most interesting thing in the world so I don't know bear with me or something. Um, I'm using Moth and Rust, my website, as an example for mine, I guess because that's what's simplest for me to explain. Um, I created like a simplified version of it here. Basically, I just took out all the text and other extraneous stuff because we don't really need that. Um, so it's just the background image and then um, my navigation box, which I'm going to show you how to create. And then um, I guess I'll, like, I'll create my blog box too and then you can see how I do those and like it's it's basically the same thing over and over again. So hopefully if I do two you'll get the gist of it. Um so the point I guess of positioning like with overlays is that you already have boxes in your mind that you wanna put in a specific place. And um so for Moth and Rest that's like like I said, that's the navigation box and then my blog box. I only have two. Um so you want to do that by, I guess, like specifying a position within a greater area, right? Like you have to specify it somehow. So I I have a main box. My main box is called main um, for the sake of simplicity. Um, and basically, my like all my inner boxes are inside of main and like when when I specify their position and their width and their height, that's in relation to their position within main. Um, so I'm gonna like I guess go through the properties. Actually wait here, let me show you like what main is. I'll just add a border to it. Um, and then like that's like it it basically goes around the entire area where you want all of your boxes to go. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so that's that. And then, so basically there's there's three crucial parts to, to main. One of them is position relative. And basically what position relative does is it allows you to reposition your element in relation to where it would normally be. So, like, if you were to just start typing onto a web page without um, adding any like center codes or positioning codes or anything, there's an automatic gap like um, of 10 pixels like from the top and from the left. So um, to override that, like I put in negative 10 left, negative 10 top. But I mean, like that's just because I'm trying to align my background image exactly to the very edge of the screen. And like if you're um, if you're centering your code or something, then you really you don't need to worry about those two properties right now. But you do still need to have position relative, whether you're going to change the positioning or not, because it, it comes into play later. Um, okay, so then the next property is my background image. Uh, like it it doesn't really matter if you have a background image or not. Um, but there's mine. And then you need to specify. A width, and I guess you don't really need to specify height, but I don't know. I did. Um, I just want to emphasize the fact that my background image, uh, the width and the height are not the same as the width and height of my main div code, and that's because, um, like the text boxes that I'm putting in, they're going underneath my image, not on top of it. So obviously, I need more height underneath it, right? To um, to ensure that I have somewhere to put my text. Um, obviously, like if you were to design like an image where the text was supposed to go on top of the image, um, like this one for example, then it would make more sense for like the width and height of your main div to be the same as the width and height of your image. But I just like I wanted to say that it's not necessary for, for you to do that. Um, so now basically it's time to um, to generate the boxes, like the inner boxes where you want your text and stuff to go. Um, so you need two, like there's two parts of the code that help you do that. One of them is like my box class and the other one 
is my nav like id um and then the, like the box class it's um it's universal to all of the boxes you're going to be creating like it, it it's going to be in the code for all of them and basically um the important part of it is um position absolute and basically if you go to w3 schools it says um the value absolute generates an absolutely positioned element positioned relative to the first parent element that has a position other than static. And basically what that means, um, if you go to your CSS, or not your CSS, your HTML at the bottom, like there's my main class, right? Like the class equals main and then my slash div there. Okay, so like that, that's where it opens and closes. And then inside that I have div class equals box. So main is the parent class right because it's inside there um, and basically what it's saying is if you specify um, your box class as absolute then the position is relative to the parent class which is main as long as the parent class has um, like a position value other than static which is why even though if you're not going to like even though you're not going to change um, the position of your main div, you still have to use position relative in the code because you can't have the default, which is position static, otherwise it's not going to work. So that's that. Um, and then I have an ID, like my ID is nav, and you're going to have to have one ID for every box that you want to create. Um, because this is the part where you specify the width, the height, and the position. Um, now the position is in relation to um, your main div, like I said. So um, as you can see, like my navigation box, it, it's quite a bit further down from the top of the page because like I don't want to write on top of my image, like I said. So it's, um, I have top 500 pixels, which is like the, the width there, and then left 10 pixels. Now you could, I guess just putting keep putting in values until you like decide that you like it or you could open Photoshop or Paint or whatever editing program you use and like crop parts of your image to figure out how far from the top you want your next text box to be. Um hopefully that makes sense. But basically like yeah, you could just you could just keep guessing. That's what I do. I just like put in values until I decide that I like things. <laughs> um, okay, so basically once you have like your positioning set up how you want it, um, then you just need to like put your HTML thing in, which is div class equals box, so that um, you specify like your overflow and your position absolute, and then ID equals nav, so that um, your thing is positioned in the right place. And then that's pretty much it, like you've already you created one box like the nav box and then um like i'll just copy and paste the code for my next one which is like my blog box which is called content um and it's basically the same other than the fact that i don't have a specified height for this one because like i want to just i want to just keep scrolling um depending on like how much i write in it but other than that, like, yeah, the code is exactly the same other than obviously, um, like different values, but the same properties. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then like, I'll save it. And as you can see, like now I have another box there and that's it. Like it, it's pretty much the same thing over and over again. Um, I say this every time, but like if, if you have questions or anything, then you can always inbox me, but I hope this is useful. Like, I don't know how well I explained that, but hopefully like being able to see somebody do it was useful. So thanks for watching and yeah, like if you if you have questions or something, just ask.